Well, good morning, guys. How are you doing today? How many of you ate some pizza yesterday? Was it good? It was good pizza, isn't it? Some of you might be eating some pizza today, too, so it's good pizza. Well, in our gospel reading today, well, first let me ask you this. How many days has it been since Christmas, since Jesus was born now? Anybody know? 40 days. 40 days. Well, a lot more since he was really born 2,000 years ago, but since Christmas, since we celebrated his birth, 40 days, okay? And on the 40th day, according to the law of Moses, who was Moses? Anybody know Moses? Moses was a guy from a long time ago, thousands of years ago, who led the Israelites out of Egypt because they were enslaved in Egypt. Remember that story? Remember the different plagues? That's Moses. That's the guy, okay? And a long time ago, Moses went up on a mountain, and, and he came back to the people with God's law, okay? So according to that law, Jesus, or every firstborn male, for that matter, who's a firstborn male here? Who's, who's, who's the oldest male in the family? You? You're the only one? You two? According to old Jewish custom, you would have to have, you would, should have been brought to the temple and, and consecrated to God, set apart to be a priest, wouldn't that be something if that's how it still was, that because you're the oldest males, you'd have to be priests or pastors? No, no, no choice in the matter at all. Well, it's not that way anymore, okay? But that's how it was during Jesus' time. So he was the firstborn male. He's brought to the temple, and he's presented, and there's a, there is a sacrifice of a couple things done, according to the law, and he is set apart to be the priest to the people. Well, why did Jesus have to do this? Why did it matter? He's the Son of God. He's perfect in every way. Why did he have to do this? Was it that important that he did it? The answer is yes. See, Jesus was perfect. He had to obey the law. He had to obey Moses' law. That was part of who he was as the Son of God. And so he submitted himself to this practice for us, right? He, the word in the, in, the, in the Bible, in that language, is actually he's, the, he's sacrificed. They brought him to sacrifice, even though they didn't really do it then. He submitted himself to us, for us. Why? Why did he do it? So that, so he could forgive us our sins. He, was, he went, underwent baptism. He came to earth, was presented, went, underwent baptism, and ultimately he suffered and died for us so that our sins could be forgiven. That's why he came, Right? And so today you're going to hear about that in the sermon. You've heard about it in the readings, that he became like one of us, that he can relate to us, he understands us because he faced temptation, but he himself did not fall for temptation. And that's great news for us because it means we have a friend in heaven preparing a place for us. Okay, so let's pray about that and thank Jesus. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to be presented in the temple as our sacrifice. When we are presented before you in heaven, may we be clean, cleansed by the blood of Jesus, so that you receive us with joy and thankfulness in as much as we receive you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, you want to get the suckers? All right. We continue with our sermon hymn then. Take my life and let it be. <laughs> 